Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, happy Monday to you all, or happy whatever day of the week it is when you are watching this. On and off, we're back with brand new music on the title track. Absolutely blew my mind. Um, but we have the rest of the album to get to, which is very exciting indeed. It hasn't been too long, it feels like, since Love Effect and the Love Effect EP, which were spectacular times indeed. Um, but considering how much of a style switch we got for By My Monster, um, I have no idea what to expect moving forward with this album. Having said that, on and off do include a couple heaters per album when it comes to B-sides. Um, Arrival still is a song that I binge listen to to this day off of you know the previous Love Effect album. And I'm really hoping that we get another couple of those through this album as well. But we have four B-sides to get through. If you want to watch me kind of lose my mind at the title track, that's already on the channel by the time this is out. It's also in the same on and off playlist. You can find it there. But we've got Aphrodite track number two, Breath Haze and Shadow track number three, Chemical Type track number four, and Slave to the Rhythm track number five to go through. So let's do just that. Here we go! Um, unfortunately, it's too close to release uh, for color-coded lyric videos, so I can only apologize on that front. Uh, so we're just gonna do the WM release, like YouTube music kind of thing. So apologies, you're not gonna get too many graphics from it, but we're just gonna talk about the music nonetheless. But this is a not enough album, and that means there's a whole lot of mono tree going on, so that's very exciting indeed. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Track number two, this is Efro. Daiti. Lyrics by Huang Hyun, GDLO, and Luke of Mono Tree and Mr. Wyatt himself. Um, same, same three people from Mono Tree on compositions alongside Minkyun, formerly MK, and Mayu Wakisaka, Wakus, Wa, Wakisaka Mayu song. And then arrangement by GDLO again of Mono Tree. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. I love Mono Tree works so much. I think they're mixed spectacular. And it's it's on and off on on top of the mono tree stuff. It's just oh oh chef's kiss already. We haven't even heard the song yet. So here we go. Gosh. Interesting bounce. There's a really interesting kind of like funk element to this, or at least I'm getting a funk vibe from it. It's got a really interesting swing and a bounce to it. It's got almost like sprinkling, sprinklings of that like Latin dance vibe too. Just the swing of that percussion part. <laughs> of course, it's on and off. It had to go into major at some point. 
just all of a sudden bright music, right? On the staples, switch it up like that. It's almost like talk, there's almost like a talk box effect going on, the scratchy guitar. What an interesting song. It's, it takes you on a journey, doesn't it? <laughs> it's... Again, kind of, it's along the lines of Bioware Monster in that it's got a kind of heaviness to it, but this one definitely has more of the usual twists and turns that on and off music likes to throw in. Um, there are some really interesting instrumental choices, though. I love the weird mixing in it. It's... It's like teetering between four or five different genres of music at once. But it never feels like it wants to lean in one specific direction, and it holds that balance so well. All these little details when it comes to like the instrumental part and what kind of like maybe filters it has, how it's been mixed, where it's been mixed, I think works so well. Hmm. And of course it's on and off, so I had to get bright at some point, right? All right, all right, all right. What do we have next? Breath Haze and Shadow, track number three. Huang Hyun of Mono Tree on lyrics. Iju Hyung, Chao Sung Carter, Mono Tree. Uh, Iju Hyung, DK Chu, Mono Tree. I feel like I'm going to be saying that a lot because, of course, this is not an off release. So. We're not getting a ballad track three, are we? No shot. What? Gorgeous reverb on the piano. Vocal front and center. Hello. Low vocal part. Or is it this way? Is it cello or is it an upright bass? What is happening? Oh, it's a cello. Okay. Wow! I was waiting for a weird switch up to happen. No, it's straight up an acoustic ballad in the middle of an album. But again, the mixing for this with the very subtle vocal harmonies and stuff. Yeah. It's like you're expecting some kind of like white noise to come in. No, it's just instruments and vocals. Get some more playful vocals, that cello is going up the fret or fingerboard. So I was vibing along to it too hard to, to figure out if that was actually a key change or not. Vocals, do your thing, man. I'm gonna shut up. Yeah, 
Wow, that sustain pedal put in some work on that last note, eh? But what? Okay, I mean, off rip. I'm a sucker for a really good ballad, so I love that. But what? Why is it here? I wonder. Ooh, you know what? Theory time. I wonder. I wonder if beautiful shadow kind of has a literal meaning in a way where by my monster Aphrodite. R is like side A. You have Breath Haze and Shadow as side B, and then like the, the final two songs, Chemical Type and Slave to a Rhythm, is gonna be this major switch, and it's gonna be like side B of the album. I wonder. I wonder if this is almost like an interlude song in a way. What? I uh, maybe it'll be better if I explain. Usually on a pop album, a ballad always comes last. Mainly because there's, there's kind of a natural progression when it comes to the album, right? The further along you go in the album, the more it slows down, the more it becomes a little bit pretty, more emotional. And then you end on like a fan song that's very pretty, very pure, or you end on a ballad that's very slow, but very pretty, a little bit of twinkle. What is this doing here? <laughs> but the composition of it again this is for me the best formula for a ballad vocal in the middle acoustic instruments that's it and even like right at the very beginning one singular acoustic instrument and one vocal something about it just whenever i'm listening to a ballad that's written specifically in this way gives me the sensation that whoever is singing is playing the instrument and i think that is the most powerful way to present a ballad at least in my opinion then you throw in a little bit of cello one time and did i i, I probably mentioned this in the title track but i played violin growing up so i know like and adore the string instruments in a classical orchestra uh, so I love when a cello gets to just wail their heart out like, like that. One of the reasons why I like Hopi Polo so much is because they have Hong Jino on cello. It's a very rare instrument to find in a band. But that's besides the point. Um, Yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. They've really taken the creative direction and gone with it, this album. Okay. All right. Chemical Type, track number four. Lyrics by GDL Huang Hyun of Mono Tree and Wyatt. Uh, composition NILD uh, Huang Hyun of Mono Tree, Noedio from The Hub, and then Yi Sung Hoon. And, and arrangements NILD Huang Hyun of Mono Tree and then Yi Sung Hoon. All right. What is happening on this album? Still smooth with the vocals though. There's the drop. To make it any special tonight, I wish I was more familiar 
with the more hip hop genres of music in terms of like actual chronology when in human history this type of music shows up. Interestingly heavy on the string section. Really cool way of taking the piano all the way down to here. There's a lot going on, hold on. I need to think of what I'm gonna say. Okay, okay, that's a roller coaster and a half. My goodness. Um, chemical type, this is gonna be a really niche thing. Chemical type remind, like, kind of gives me the idea of what a 2020s remake of a song from Persona 2's OST would sound like. There's just something about it that gives me that energy to it. If you've ever played or listened to the Persona 2 soundtrack, well, Persona 2 technically had two games. It had Innocent Sin and Eternal Punishment. I only ever played Eternal Punishment. But it has that type of vibe when it comes to the genre of music. And almost like, um, so it's a JRPG at the end of the day. But kind of the BGM that you would hear when you're walking around town. It's got this relaxed vibe to it. But in terms of age, that Persona 2 must have been like mid-2000s. Mid, early mid-2000s. Yeah, really interesting. It's why I get that idea is the pacing of it. But also the specific synth sounds they used. And the way they've structured the harmonies and the chords throughout the song is very much reminiscent of Eternal Punishment's OST. And that's really interesting to me. Because that's a very niche sound that does not get a lot of love and attention from the K-pop side of things. Just because it's so niche, I feel like. Wow. Honestly, this beautiful Shadow album is taking me to places I never thought I'd be able to go with on and off. But... They're constantly doing things that blow my mind, so it shouldn't be a surprise at this point, should it? But, one last song to go. Track number five, Slave to the Rhythm. Uh, lyrics by GDLO and Luke of Monotree and Mr. Wyatt. Composition, 17. Betty Cole. Wyatt. Oh, Wyatt on the composition side this time. Okay, so we've gotten, M I guess, now Minkia, not MK anymore. Um... Min Kenan and Wyatt on compositions, very cool. Luke GDLO, Huang Hyun of Mono Tree. And the Oh no, it's a different team. Arrangement 17, Betty Ko, Jelly, GDLO, Huang Hyun of Mono Tree. Alright, let's finish the album strong. Here we go. It's got some legs to it. got that strutting pace to it. The synth is remind me of a clubby music. Those punch-ins kind of giving me eyes when uh, Violetta punch-ins. Oh, 
Whoa. Wait, this isn't the full drop, is it? Oh, that was the full drop. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, it's like every single phrase the song gives me a different, not inspiration, but like a different other song that it reminds me of. You set me free. I like the keys in this chorus. They had a nice texture. Hit the brakes one time for the bridge. You set me free, this is me, be a slave to the The two kind of bangs, though. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, let's talk, shall we? Um, uh, Slave to the Rhythm for me has given me like three or four different songs that it's like, oh, it reminds me of this, it reminds me of this. The verse kind of reminds me of 101's energetic in a way, just the it's kind of mo the moving uh club floor bass vibes with the kind of bouncy but also a little bit sassy vocal part the pre-chorus is giving me there's a handful of girl group pop songs that has this sound um limelight's what crystal i think limelight's crystal eyes ones is it fiesta or violetta i can ne i can never remember which one's which is when pre-chorus comes around uh triple s Evolutions Rodante. But it's it's essentially big brassy synth chords. Boom. Boom boom boom. Cut in. And then Is it Chinese married to the music? The chorus? What the chorus reminds me of? My brain is saying that it's that song. I don't know if that's the case. But it's giving me that kind of, it's like is this second Jenny vibes? Is that what maybe my brain's trying to say? I don't know. I'm confused. Um, the song, though, I think off of first listen, Slave to the Rhythm for me is probably the most digestible song out of the five on the album, including like By My Monster. I think By My Monster just I'll get the most playtime out of just because it's a title track and I naturally tend to flock to that. But Slave to the Rhythm out of the B-sides is probably the most palatable and the most digestible one off of first listen. It's the most straightforward when it comes to the little elements that are involved within the song itself. I'm just kind of... Not shocked is the wrong word, but so thrown off at the direction that this album has gone. But I feel like that's the whole point of an on and off release is my brain is going to be blown with what they can do and if we're looking at it from that aspect completely mission accomplished i don't know it's all it's almost like because what on and off technically have they're split up into two teams right on and off it's like we um uh, love effect was the it's almost like you know red velvet have red and velvet it's like love effect was there a bright side and then this 
beautiful shadow era is their darker side and i quite like that because admittedly i am very much a title track merchant when it comes to on and off so i'm not well versed in what their b-sides are or if this kind of switching sounds back and forth is a common thing that they do also really didn't delve into the b-sides from the um your song era so i don't know i'm not very familiar with that either that's entirely on me but if this is a case where on and off can repeatedly and effectively switch their sound kind of back and forth in a way kind of like the boys does then um well i'm not going to complain one bit because that 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 takes you on a journey that, that takes you on a journey for sure I feel like I'm a bad fan by saying I miss the bright on and off, but a part of me does miss the bright bubbly on and off. But at the same time, when you come back with something that's so musically intricate like this entire era has been, yeah, my brain's not going to remember the fact that it was upset by the fact that there wasn't bright on and off in here. It's There's a lot for me to take in, and there's a lot to sink my teeth into, and I like that. It's a very plentiful album in that there's plenty of things to pimp, like look at there's plenty of things to really hone in on it's a it's a busy album it's a project album for me in that i can sit down and really get in depth with it if i want to spend some time like i could spend an entire day just breaking down this album just because there's so much stuff going on and that's very cool for me i quite enjoyed that in, in a kind of weird and roundabout way i really enjoyed that hmm no b side of the album I, I i just can't get over the fact that that you know breath haze and shadow that just pure ballad just came right in the middle like that threw me so off guard slave to the rhythm though is a nice bop which i can get behind for me though i think i mean by my monster is probably going to be my favorite song on the album overall i just really like that title track it's very well done but that is it from me today with the on and off beautiful shadow ep thank you for listening along with me hopefully you enjoyed it as much as i did hopefully the survived content id so far we've been pretty good on wm albums um so crossed but one last request from me today let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world whether it be checking with your friends and family holding the door open for somebody or even picking up a piece of trash off the street just one small act of kindness to may bring someone else's day-to-day -day and know that wherever you are in the world should you ever be going through a tough time in your life for whatever reason it may be even though i'm just some guy in the internet who waffles about music in his free time knows that i will always be a friend an ally and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me so take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.